Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we got another Genshin Impact developer blog post, which if you guys don't know, these are usually disappointing and never as good as the Honkai Star Rail ones, but sometimes they do provide us with a little information. And I've heard from the grapevine today that there may or may not be artifact loadouts in today's Genshin Impact developer blog post. So without further ado, let's get in to the video. But before we do that, if you could, it really would mean a lot to me if you would go down and hit that subscribe button. Only a small percentage of you are actually subscribed and it literally only takes a couple seconds. All you gotta do is go down, click a little button and just like that, you're subscribed. But with that all being said, let's go and check out today's blog post. All right, everybody. Well, I'm pretty excited for this one today. I haven't gone through the full contents of it yet. However, I have heard a couple snippets, but why don't we take a look at it together today? So here we are on the Genshin Impact Twitter page. If we scroll down a little bit, we'll see fast equip artifacts, Serenity pot optimizations, and system and function updates. Now, I'm not sure what fast equip artifacts sounds like to you guys, but to me, that sounds like artifact loadouts. Let's see if it really is. Dear travelers, the newest developer discussion has arrived. We'd like to share with you the optimizations that will be released during the version 4.4 update. First thing to talk about, fast equip artifacts. Okay, here we go. So they're making some artifact management optimizations in version 4.3 that will be there in version 4.4. We hope that this helps travelers choose and equip artifact sets more quickly yes you can either choose a quick loadout or a custom loadout okay quick loadout a set of artifacts will be put together for your reference based on data from recently active players uh that doesn't seem like a loadout well we'll, we'll give them the benefit of a doubt maybe the custom loadout is a little different you can select the artifact main affix set type in minor affixes and choose whether or not to use artifacts that haven't already been equipped what you can adjust the artifact sets generated by custom loadout according to their own requirements what okay so this description is really misleading it doesn't look like they actually understand the concept of artifact loadouts because my vision of artifact loadouts has always been that you save a four piece on a character using specific artifacts and then if i wanted to put that on another character like for example if i wanted this four piece tenacity on my yoon jin instead i would then be able to have an artifact loadout ready that would take the artifacts off of my zhongli and then go over and put them on my Yoon Jin instead. That was my idea of Artifact Loadout. They seem to have taken a more complicated and frankly unnecessary angle on this where you can now sort by set types, minor affixes, and other things among that. I hope that this allows you to take artifacts from other characters that already have it equipped but it also does say that this is not indicative of the final product so who knows they may change this in the future but to be honest i'm still a little salty that they still aren't gonna let us save our own presets on artifacts for each individual character and instead i have to search through my 900 emblem pieces to find the right goblin and hat for every emblem character that i use but who knows, maybe Hoyoverse will understand what an artifact loadout is one of these days. Uh, that's kind of disappointing to be honest. It is a nice addition, and I do think it will help. It just wasn't what I was looking for, but we can move on. There is more than just artifact loadouts in this blog post, so let's keep moving on. Serena Teapot Optimizations oh furnished in categories wow man that's so exciting do they actually think people still use the serena teapot because personally i haven't touched the serena teapot in like over a year now it's been a long time since i've bothered with the serena teapot man anyways they made some editing screen list optimizations now when placing furnishings using editing mode your current positions and list will be remembered it will not be reset after switching to another furnishing category 
that was not necessary. W Genuinely, man, who's asking for this? Which one of you put this in the Hoyoverse developer blog post? Which one of you goofballs asked for this? Was it you, Tom? Additionally, the companion list will now show your companion's friendship levels who haven't been invited to your Serena teapot and whose friendship levels haven't reached max yet. Now that's actually helpful. I'm sure most people can relate to this, but mainly the companions that you put in the Serena teapot are the ones that you don't have max companionship with. So it actually would be nice to sort by them because sometimes you don't know which ones you have max companionship with and which ones you don't. Semi useful feature there. And then last one is the lingering moment optimizations, which will now prioritize characters with whom you've completed the hangout events and unlocked hangout memories when you put up those silly little paintings. Wait, so these little these little paintings, these ones, now when I go to my paintings, they'll now be set in order of which ones I've completed? Bro, who cares? <laughs> Who's asking for this? All right, we keep moving. What's next? Add reminders for collecting adventure encounters rewards. Since the adventure encounter system was made available, we found that some travelers may have been forgetting to claim their daily commission rewards. No, no, I haven't. I remember every day. So now a red dot prompt has been added to the version 4.4 to remind you to select claim rewards. So now I have to deal with more red dots on my screen. Bro, I have enough of those. I don't want to go to your version highlights, your notices, your community. And now you're shoving more red dots on my screen to stress me out. Honestly, them adding more red dots is more stressful than them actually adding hard content to the game. Next up, they're going to increase the number of party compositions. Now, this is actually useful. They're going to increase it from 10, I believe, to 15. That is actually a really useful change. I will not lie. I've been stuck at 10 now for the longest time. And with new characters like Navia and Nouvellet, I want them to have their own dedicated team slots. And I really haven't been able to give them one since all of mines are already filled up right now. So I'm going to take that as the first W for Genshin of this blog post. Optimize test run challenges. When trying out new characters, you'll be able to choose to challenge the next character trial stage instead of having to exit the current stage. Cool, I guess. I don't know. I'm going to keep it a buck. I don't really bother with the test challenges anymore. I mean, what do you get from them? 40 primos? That's like one seventh of a wish every month. But that aside, if you like the test run challenges, I guess it's a useful update. Then they're going to add borderless mode, which is actually a really useful update for me in particular, because whenever you leave Genshin on full screen and then you actually go into another tab, your Genshin will just pop away. So having it on borderless mode will actually make it a lot easier to run two different tabs at once and not have Genshin Impact shut down, or at least that's what I'm hoping. And then the last thing here we have is Optimize model precision. Okay, so they added a new dynamic character resolution function that will be made available on both PC and console. Now, let me zoom in on this a little more. I can't see the difference from all the way back here, but I'm sure there is a significant difference here. So let's see. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, I guess Aether's face is a little wider. It takes me about three paces to get from one side to the other after the optimization and like maybe two paces to do it before the optimization. I'm gonna keep it a buck guys. I can't tell the difference. <laughs> What's the difference here? They look the exact same. Maybe some of you guys who are into 3D modeling in the comments can help me out here because I didn't see the difference there. But anyways, that's gonna be the end of our Genshin developer blog post. Let me know what you guys thought of it. Personally, this wasn't my favorite developer blog post ever. I'm okay with the new loadout system, but I do wish they could have done preset loadouts, but you can't get everything you want in life. As for the Cerna teapot, I really don't care since they still refuse to increase the build limit, which honestly just takes all the joy out of the Cerna teapot. And then as for these last little couple system function updates, party composition is cool. I like borderless mode and the optimized precision would be cool if I knew the difference. But anyways, <laughs> that's going to be all for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this little update video and let me know what you think of the Genshin changes down in the comments below. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Peace.